and it will bring the volume of everything up to that louder sound. So if we hit play, hear how much louder that is than the original. This is a, something that's been annoying me for quite some time, and that is auto normalization when you export a GarageBand project. This is a pain. So let me show you what I mean here. If you're not familiar with GarageBand iOS, for starters, let me say that on GarageBand for your Mac, you have the ability to turn auto normalization off and on. And I don't have a video on it because I don't cover Mac a lot, but I'm sure if you go to Dean Davis or Patrick over at the GarageBand guide, they've got videos on there. It's just in the options and you can go in there and you can say auto normalization on or off. I should have had GarageBand running here to show you that. But the problem here is that here in GarageBand iOS, we do not have said option. So no matter where you go, it should just be an option right in here that should just say auto normalization on, off, because it's doing a process here that is a pain in the butt. Because if you've got your track, you've got your track nicely mixed in here. Now, this is just a very basic sample track here, but we'll, uh, we'll turn the volume of these down just so that we can prove my point here. And we'll hit play. So super low volume track, right? We'll bring it up a little bit. So if I wanted to export this amazing track with, you know, two chords, then I can do that here. But look what happens when I do this. You can see there, look, that really low, right? We're down here at like a quarter of the volume. We're probably at like minus 24 dB. GarageBand doesn't give us meters, but if it did, it would be like minus 24 dB. If we come out of here and uh, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll name this guitar example and we'll export this. So we'll tap and hold and then we'll hit share. See what happens when we share this as a song. We'll just do an uncompressed WAV file and share it out. And we're just going to open it in. I'll open it in to uh, audio share just so that you can see what this does. So here it goes. It's going to export the song. Don't know why it's taking so long. It's two tracks, GarageBand. And we'll open it here in audio share. And look what it's done here. It's actually normalized this to zero dB. Now in this case, it's okay, yeah, because you've just got these spikes. So this spike here is up to zero dB, but most of the spikes are lower than that. So it'll just take the loudest sound and it will bring the volume of everything up to that loudest sound. So if we hit play. Hear how much louder that is than the original? Yeah, not cool, right? So is there anything we can do about this? Not really, but the one trick, the one tip, the one hack, if you've got tracks that you do want to bring the volume down, so you want some headroom for your mastering, so let's just say we turn these back up to their default volume here, it's going to be a bit louder, yeah? In fact, we'll, we'll put them all the way up to here just to make it a bit of a... So there you can see, like we're peaking out the top here. Now you'd never, you'd never export a song at this level. But again, look what happens if we export this song now at those levels, because uh, we'll get a very similar sort of result. So we'll come out here, we'll share this again, we'll do the open in, and we'll let it export. Should be pretty quick this time, we hope. And then uh, we'll see. And then I'll show you one little tip that can help a little bit with this auto normalization. So there it is. So it's slightly larger, yeah, but it's still, you can see here that it's got larger waveforms. We'll just scroll down here. So there's the original down at this level. And here's the one where we've got it peaked out. So you can see here that with this one, it's, it's limiting right across here. See how many of these are going right to the top and right to the bottom? This is because we've actually got it louder than. So the auto normalization is actually doing some limiting. It's turning down the volume of these peaks. If you've got something like this, this is better because you can see here, it's not turning down the volume of many peaks. It's just finding that loudest peak and everything else is lower. The reason this is important is if I was mastering this track, I could bring this into something like Final Touch, just turn down the input volume and master it with some headroom. If I grabbed this, it's already limiting it. So if I turn down the volume to give myself headroom, it's actually going to be artificial because it's already going to have some limiting. You're going to get some pumping. You're going to get some distortion. So the simple tip here to make sure that your exports here in GarageBand sound the best they can is to turn them down. Now, in this case, it's pretty simple because we've got two tracks. We can just turn them down to here, yeah? or maybe not even that far. We could just go to somewhere like here and uh, there you go. As long as you're sitting around that 50 to 70% mark, you're fine. If you start seeing the yellows, if you start seeing these peaks up the top, see those leave behinds? Anytime you see a leave behind, that means that your track is clipping and it's having to 
auto- artificially turn that down and limit the track. So you don't want that. You want it to be better. Now, what if you've got like 20 tracks? So it's fine with two tracks, Pete, but what if I've got 20 tracks? Do I have to go down and turn each one down individually? No. I'm going to show you a quick tip, and I've shown this before. It's super cool. We turn on the FX track. Stay with me. I know it's weird. We hit record. We just need to add any effects because we're going to delete it anyway. So we just tap this, we tap it, we delete it. But now we have this FX track and what this FX track comes with built in, let's just turn those back up, is a visual EQ. So not only can we come in here and EQ our entire track now, because we've got basically a makeshift master fader, we've also got a makeshift master fader for volume, yay. So if we've got this too loud and your whole mix is too loud, you can grab this and drop it down. So let's drop this whole mix down like 10 dB here. And then when we play it, check that out. Even though our tracks are still right up the top there, and I wouldn't recommend doing this if all your tracks are clipping because you're still going to get some distortion and some potential limiting and pumping, but it just helps you. So instead of having, uh, as we said here, instead of having this up here and watch your master meter there, we turn it down. And if we turn that down and put it down, say, 10, minus 10 dB, now we can export. And instead of having it at that high level, we're going to get something similar to that first example. So let's just share this again. Boom. Share the song. Uncompressed wave. And it'll pop up here. We'll open it. And we'll open it in audio share. By the way, if you don't have audio share, highly recommend getting it. It's super, super useful. And it's just the easiest way to bounce your audio around and to manage your audio. So audio share, there you go. So again, you can see here that this has given us, we've taken that audio, but just turning it down there on that master fader gives us this. Now, essentially it's the same audio, but look at the additional space we have there. Yeah, this one's going to zero dB because of the auto normalization. But if we sent this straight over to final touch and then turn the input volume down by say six dB, we're gonna create what is technically six decibels of headroom. Then when we add our multiband compressor, our limiting, our EQ in Final Touch or wherever we're mastering, then we're going to have some headroom to do that. So auto normalization, super frustrating, but there are a couple of little tips that you can do. And the number one tip, uh, if I had to give it in, if I had to say it in three words, is turn it down.